what's up everyone today we have subaru uh sp170 from the looks of it it's a my tm pressure washer the owner says it makes perfect pressure the problem is in about 10 seconds after from starting it up it just plumes out smoke and i'm not about to show that because i don't want to you know inhale all that nonsense right now and I'm going to show you something that makes me not think that there there's no possibility of that to happening like it most definitely is going to be pulling me out smoke let me show you why meet our problem oil well more specifically I guess that's not the problem it's the level of oil it's already seeping out so, this is important right here. You see how fluid that is? Oil, don't get me wrong, is most definitely a fluid, but it's not, unless you put the wrong type of oil in there, which trust me, he very well might have, um, the owner, it shouldn't be that runny. This should take 10W30 or straight 30. I think the manual actually says 10W30. But if you're in a pinch, I'm sure straight 30 probably will be fine, especially since most people don't pressure wash in the winter time. But here's the problem. I've already looked at this, but if you have that problem, wipe up the oil that's spilled and smell it. What does it smell like? Does it smell like fuel? This does. There's a difference between overfilled and oil filled with fuel. So this is what happens. Somewhere in here, the carburetor, there is a needle and seat. The needle will seal off the fuel from entering the bowl and when it gets to a certain level. And then once it drops beyond that level, it opens it up and allows fuel to go in there always keeping a certain level of fuel. If that needle and seat are not working well together, that whole relationship is not going to be working. You're going to have fuel uh, uncontrollably fill the bowl. Now, if you look at the tank, it's higher, much higher than the carb. That's how gravity systems work. Higher the level, flu uh, fluids go to the lower level because of gravity. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, if that isn't working, where is the fuel going to go? Well, there's passageways all through this carb, primarily the emulsion tube and the jet, and that goes through the throat of the carb eventually. Well, look at it. This design allows the air to go or come down into the carburetor. So the fuel isn't going to have a whole lot of places to go right here. It's going to have to fill up pretty high before it gets to a point where it's going to be spilling out through the top. Consequently, that can happen, but more likely than not, if you are in that realm of the, of the cycle of the engine where the intake valve is open, that fuel is not going to go and fill this area up. It's going to go towards the valve and it's going to fill the cylinder and then eventually it's going to uh, seep past the rings and into the oil. Good way of checking that is smelling the oil. And if you just put fuel in there, I checked, this is empty, completely empty. If all of a sudden your oil smells like gas and you no longer have gas, or if it gets to the point where there's literally oil and gas mixing on the floor, you have a car problem. Now, a couple things we're going to do. We're going to clean the carb. However, something important to note, it is imperative you change the oil. I don't care if it was changed yesterday. There's gasoline there. Do not use it. It's going to be not going to be doing its same properties as it needs to. It's not going to lubricate the same way. You're going to ruin your engine and it could be dangerous in the an aspect of it. But now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this carb changed. I'm not a fan of these Subaru engines. There's certain things about them. 
I'm just not sure about. I, it's nothing bad. It could just be the fact that I'm not, I don't really see a lot of Subarus. I'll just want to top two. Oh, you see that? It's, it's dripping. Literally oil. It's dripping out of there. It got so full. Yeah, I bet if I pull the recoil, it will get, it's hydro locked too. No, it's not hydro locked, but let's get a towel and kind of try to get ahead of the mess. In my opinion, you should change the oil two times. You should put dirty oil on the first time, let it run. Not dirty, but just old. And um, at that point, I, I did double check there was no gas in here, right? Yeah, there's no fuel in there, okay. Anyway, let that run. Change that oil again, and then the fresh oil. This is why I don't like it. See that fuel clip? That fuel clip is a giant pain to get to. Like, why would you do that? Come on. Give us some working room here. It's not that difficult. I'm sure the people that designed it also said it's not that difficult, so. There's a difference between an engineer and a mechanic. That just pulls right out. It doesn't have a sharp of a corner on it as a Honda does. I suppose that's a benefit. This fuel clip, I'm not wanting to let go. Let's pull the carb out a little bit. So what causes this? anything really any type of debris can get stuck the float itself can get um, stuck in one direction especially if it's starting to experience some type of corrosion or it was freshly worked on and the angle wasn't completely correct and the person didn't notice it This fuel line, I tell you, finally, look at that. That's some serious corrosion on there. I might even, I mean, the fuel line itself is pretty soft. Um, I know what I'll do. I'm going to take a small container. I'm going to take some garbage fuel. just leave that. We're going to catch the garbage fuel as it leaves us and we'll kind of wash out the tank. Yeah, sure, this runs. Really? What's going on here? have enough fuel on there. I didn't want to put a lot because this isn't the biggest cup. A 
Wow. I think we have more problems than just this. I mean, it's slowly dripping. You see that? Well, I was just going to slowly drip on the towel anyway. Place the fuel filter. It doesn't look bad though. Let me do a little looking. Ah, uh, that never seems to want to work. Okay, well, plan B pliers. Maybe not. I don't want to ruin that. I might just throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner like this, except I'll take out the jets because we're already here. If I don't have another set of gaskets, I don't really want to have to buy another set of gaskets. It's a little grimy. Take out this emulsion tube. Not with that screwdriver, I'm not. I don't like that either. That one's too small. If you use something that's too small, you can strip the brass. And if you strip the brass, you're never going to be able to get that out. It's a real pain. And when you can take it out, it involves ruining that emulsion tube. So you usually have to use like an easy out or something. What's so those names are need to be rethought. It's usually not easy. There we go. So I'm gonna put that in the cleaner and be back. It's a day or two later, and let's get this put together. That went through the carb cleaner or the ultrasonic cleaner. I didn't take off the gaskets and they're dry now. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't do it the same day. That and I had to go get another project. So I know what you're thinking. Your garage can't handle another project and I'm not gonna argue with you on that one. There we go. If you blow in here with the facing upside down and move this, you should hear air with the valve turned on, of course. And if you don't, then you have a problem. Oh, excuse me, if you hear air, hear air all the time, you have a problem. Um, the bowl is looking pretty good. Let's just maybe dry it out a little bit more or blow it out. <coughs> just in case. No, we need our jets. That would be important. And blow these out. I save you the, tr the trouble of that. I forgot to push record, but I just put the emulsion tube in. Made sure that was nice and clear and so, uh, you could see through it. And I can.
technically we were told that this machine ran obviously you saw the inside of it so it's probably not that far out of the realm of possible Now, yesterday, I did change the fuel line, and even though it was still in pretty good shape, I didn't feel like it was a good idea to um, keep it... Is this the same one? Yeah, okay. I didn't th feel like it was a good idea to uh, leave it because there could be debris in there, and I don't want to leave debris in the line to then just have it get stuck in the needle again and cause this exact same problem one more time. Take that jet out as well, or I did. I don't know if I showed that part, but I've noticed it when I was starting to clean it. go we have a completed carb I'm going to install it and then we'll get to draining the oil remember how I told you I don't like these engines I can't remember why and it's stuff like this that I'm going to have to sh explain because of this linkage not being a normal linkage I can't put the carb on the studs and then put the linkage on I could slip it off but at this point, I'm really afraid it's going to break the plastic piece if I try to install it. And I can't get both sides over both studs, so I have to remove one. I can get one and then do the other one. Or I could do one, have one on the carb, and then push it farther in and put the other stud back in. It's stupid. I shouldn't have to do this nonsense but it's how only way I could really see without potentially breaking them. Thank you, Subaru. It occurred to me, I don't know if it, everyone knows what I was talking about. If you put one nut on backwards and the other one on forwards, hold this one down and tighten this one, it will kind of hold it in place. And you can, um, with your wrench, uh, take out the stud with the back nut or potentially even the front if you really put too tight or very tight. And then this turns into like a standard bolt, more or less. And then we can remove like so. Let me grab my tool here. So now we should have the ability to move it forward. I obviously have to put the fuel line and everything on, but that's what I was talking about. I put everything together, and if you can't tell, <coughs> excuse me, we're at a weird old angle because I put a block down. I want this to be, like this is technically straight right now. I want that to be elevated because there is a drain plug right here. There's nothing underneath it for it to drain into. The other side exactly the same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off and hopefully all the oil is kind of not going to want to run out that much. And I can take a pump and pump that out. Let's see. Did we get lucky? I don't know how overfilled this is. Okay, we're good. Oh, we're barely good. The oil is like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like right here I'm touching. Yeah, that's completely full. I'm going to get the pump, pump out as much as I can, and then um, put some more in, and uh, we'll see if this runs. What I did was I pumped it out. Then I had some old oil I used from a different machine and put it in there. With the pull cord or the spark plug disconnected, I spun the engine around with the pull cord like four or five times drain that out and then let it sit there for about hmm, 
20 minutes on its side. So get all as much of everything out as you can. Putting good new oil in there and here we are. I'm 100% sure this is going to smoke. So I have it facing the garage door. I'm not going to connect it to water quite yet. I just want to see if the engine's doing okay and then we'll check the pump. So it's oh. It always surprises me whenever that happens. I pulled it over like five times and didn't do that before. Hmm. Well, that is just surprising I don't see a hint of smoke anywhere that that's really weird um, okay well there you have it um, if it were to smoke basically what ended up happening is oil was either still left in the intake there's not a whole lot of intake for it to be sitting in right now especially since I had the carb off for such a long time or excess oil on the cylinder but if you pulled a, a pull rope like I did you probably got rid of some of it and put it into the muffler and then finally you get to the muffler where that oil could be sitting and then eventually it will burn off you can always tell when it's in the muffler because when you turn it off when it's hot the muffler is still smoking if it completely stops I mean, granted, there'll be a little bit of smoke when you first turn it off, but if it's still smoking a good 30 seconds after you turn it off, it's the oil in the muffler. But other than that, here we go. I'm going to finish it up here. If you have smoking problems, uh, check this. Make sure it's not just a bad carb, and you're good to go. Have a good rest of your day. Follow me on Instagram with smallengine101. Have any questions, leave a comment below. Uh, definitely don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good night.